All right, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to take you on another what we eat in a week. We currently have so many vegetables from the garden. And this morning, we are on the way home from town. And I thought, you know what? Let's do sort of an appetizer themed meal here. So we're gonna do some jalapeno poppers, but then I'm also gonna make something similar for the kids, but with bell peppers. So my plan is just to cut them in quarters, fill them with cream cheese, wrap them in bacon and bake them. And then we're also gonna make a homemade salsa from all of our tomatoes here, limes, and just salt and pepper, because I don't really have, well, we'll add onion. And then some guacamole. So we're gonna have chips, guacamole, salsa, and pepper poppers as our meal. We have so much sage in the garden this year and so I am hanging it so that we can dry it out for the winter. We also really like to use dried sage as opposed to fresh sage. So last night, for example, my daughter Johanna took down some of the dried sage and it's really easy to powder it up with your hands whenever it's dry and made some homemade sausage. So that's kind of the plan for a lot of this, even in the immediate future, not even for the winter necessarily. One of my favorite things to make all summer long is a simple pasta sauce with homegrown tomatoes, onion, some fresh basil from the garden, salt, pepper, some fresh garlic. Such simple ingredients, but it really makes a beautiful, delicious summer staple for us here. Nutmeg. No, it's a nutmeg. Do you? Yep. Okay. Is that cumin or is that chili powder? Cayenne. That's cayenne. You put cayenne in it? Oh. Just last time? Yeah. All right. Mm. How's it smell, Eli? Uh, so good. good. Grand Marsala. I love that. So what you put in last time? Nope. I wouldn't do that. Where it's like it? an Indian spice. Smell it. Just a tiny dash. Do it how you did last time. It was so delicious last time, the sausage. Lots of sage. Okay. I think you should probably stick with what you did last time because it was very, very good sausage. No, well, we had, wait, there wasn't our flavor. Yeah. Sure. I feel like there was plenty of flavor. I like that yeah. Or zucchini flavor. I, I think you should definitely do the uh, coffee. I know. I wanted to make those things to put an espresso over it. Oh, an avocado? An avocado. Then just make um, a vanilla ice cream. Yeah, I thought we'd make that and then I'll make a decaf for us. That's that's a lot of cream. Ooh, yeah, it's, it's for you tomorrow. Let's just, let's just do all cream and no milk. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. 
wall over here. Did you say you were gonna put a We don't want whipped cream, we just want it to be, um, the sugar to be incorporated without heating the cream up because if we heat up the cream, then it never sets right. So that's why we're doing it this way. Eli, leave that on, a watch pot never boils. You ever heard that? My grandma always told me that. It's, it's just, a, it's not, you know, you know what I'm saying. Hey, tonight I'm gonna try fry bread tacos. So fry bread is basically a flatbread that you fry in oil and it's a really good base for sweet or salty things alike, but tonight it's gonna to be tacos. I'm experimenting with a sourdough version of this, but for right now, I'm just doing it a regular way. So I'm gonna do two cups of flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and then a cup of water. Research them, still using them. I mean, I mean, I'm still gonna use what I have. Um, I, I'll research before I buy another. But for now, I still have avocado oil, and so that is what I'm gonna use to fry these up. some pesto pasta. We have a massive basil patch. That is a lot of basil. <laughs> make pesto I'm just going to add basil olive oil whatever nuts you have I like walnuts traditionally you use pine nuts I don't have that actually I didn't plan this so all I have 
is pecans, which isn't really ideal, but it's okay. I'm also going to add salt to taste, some shredded, fresh Parmesan cheese. And then sometimes, I, after I add all the oil and get it to a nice consistency, I even add a little bit of water just to get it you know, nice and able to coat the pasta. A good option as well is to add a little bit of pasta water so it's starchy. That's really good. This is a very random assortment of chicken. It's just some stuff I had and I didn't have like a lot of any one thing. So I was gonna cut it all up and put it in here, but I think I'm going to just serve it with like, give somebody a plate of pasta and then like a chicken leg because the skin is too crispy and delicious to like throw it into pasta. So we're just gonna have pasta with chicken. I'll probably come up, cut up these boneless skinless here and put that on maybe like one of the younger kids plates. All right, this is my sourdough Hawaiian sweet roll bread. It's something I've been experimenting with. Wrote down what I was doing, because I have a feeling it's gonna be really good. I did a cup of pineapple juice, a half cup of milk, half a cup of sugar, half a cup of starter, quarter cup of softened butter, a teaspoon of vanilla and egg, two teaspoons of salt, and five cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. I kneaded that until it was stretchy, and then I let it sit for, I guess it's been about 12 hours now, so that way it's nice and sour and it's risen, it's bubbly. Then I'm just gonna divide them into 15 rolls. Allow it to rise again and then brush it with an egg wash and bake. Um, now I'm gonna have to just see how long. I'm kind of thinking around 25 minutes. And then from there my idea is just to do ham and Swiss Hawaiian sweet roll sandwiches for a meal. So it's just a nice meal that you could prepare ahead of time and take with you if you're going on like a picnic or a hike or something. Also, we love Hawaiian sweet rolls for sandwiches. If we're ever out and about and we don't have any food and we stop by the grocery store, instead of grabbing just like white bread, which it's not any healthier, but we just grab the Hawaiian sweet rolls because they're so good. So I like the idea of making a sourdough version. took the kids to the park, so while I was gone, I told Luke to take my Hawaiian sweet rolls, and I had some meat and cheese in the fridge, so we just did these Hawaiian sweet roll ham and Swiss cheese, put them in the oven, and now we just have these easy little sliders ready to go for a quick meal.
meal I'm gonna share with you this week for the What We In A Week is chili. Now that's not a summer meal, but the reason we've been making it so much lately is we're trying to use up the tomatoes from the garden. And also, I like that it's very easy to make and easily made by kids. So today we had a lot of leftover ground beef in the refrigerator, so we threw that in, some canned beans, some tomatoes, chili powder, and then we're gonna top it with some shredded cheese sauerkraut and avocado, diced avocado. That's what I also really like about it. You can add a lot of different toppings. So sauerkraut's a nice complement to it as well as fermented jalapenos or banana peppers, also great from the garden. It's a meal that when you don't have a lot of time comes together really quick. Another thing we could add in is some shredded zucchini. So we freeze dried a bunch of that, throw a little handful of that in, might be good. Can we do that, Joanna? I think that'd be good. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for following along on this What We Eat in a Week. I hope that you enjoyed going along with us throughout our week as we make food for our large family of nine. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you're brand new, go ahead and hit that subscribe. I make new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.